Ooh, story time. How did Theo hear about TRPC? I discovered TRPC. <sighs> Let me check GitHub quick and see when I added it to the ping code base. September 14th, 2021. So early, late August, early September is when I started playing with TRPC. I actually have the first PR where I started using TRPC at ping here, where plus 821 minus 1048. And then I went through and did another where I moved more things over and ended up being like minus 3K total plus 1000 or so. It was incredible how much I got to save by doing this because of how much like bad validation like shit I had written and how many like horrible file structures I had had to create in order to serve all the things we had. Before this rewrite, I hope I don't show anything too proprietary when I do this. We had a bunch of API, like get call token, get room from Agora, get user info, room controls, room in it. We had all of these different APIs that were different files that were full of bullshit. These all got to be killed because instead I had a syntax to define the different functions the client might call. There were even more in here that I ended up going through and deleting later, which was one of the most like validating experiences I have had as a developer, getting to go through here and delete, get Agora room data, get my call token, get my profile, get room info, get upload. Like all of these got to be deleted and replaced with a single TRPC endpoint. It was, it, it made working in this code base significantly better. How did I find TRPC is how we got here though. I found TRPC because I had a proposal a while back. The idea I had was a, a, a custom React hook that was effectively a compiler hook as much as it was a React hook, where I would write use backend, give it a name similar to in TRPC and in React query, and then an async function that is intended to run on the backend. So in this case, get profile from DB is like a, a Prisma call or something along those lines. And then a compiler would see this use backend call it would create an endpoint with this function and whatever its dependencies are. And then inside the actual code, insert a React query call or like a, a use query here that calls the generated endpoint to get this data. So on client, sorry, on client, in dev, the thing I wrote here is where the type comes from. But in user land, once this is compiled and run, this becomes an API that gets hit, and this becomes a use query wrapping fetch. I really liked this idea. I knew it was going to suck to build. So when I saw Tanner Lindsley was having a Twitter space, I thought, hey, Tanner, I, I really like React Query. I would really love the ability to not have to write the API every time I want to access backend data, I would really love the ability to asynchronously just call backend in my front end and not think about it too much. Have you ever thought about what it would be like to use React Query inside of a like compiler step or a different way of using React Query that allows me to define my backend in it? And I showed him this proposal and he replied, oh, this is really cool. It kind of reminds me of TRPC. I haven't had a chance to look into it too much, but I heard that it's using uh, React Query under the hood to fetch type safe data. It's like, oh, that sounds interesting. I'll get to that soon. And I did what I always do, find something else more interesting. And that is when I discovered Astro. <laughs> so if I uh, actually, I know the best place to find this. On the Astro site, I have a tweet in here. This guy rebuilt my next site using Astro out of curiosity. And here we could see that in uh, September 12th, 2021, I rewrote my blog using Astro as a fun experiment because I, I knew uh, Fred decently well. I was pretty like friendly. With, I helped him write some of like the announcement blog posts around Snowpack and stuff. I, I've been copy editing for bloggers for a minute now. So I saw Astro. It's like I, my website should be faster than it is. And I kind of want to play with this thing. Let's, let's port it over. So I did quick. It was absolutely floored with how much better like not just the the experience of building a static website was using Astro then next, but how much better the like client experience of the much more performance static site was. So I was blown away. This I thought this exploration was gonna take me like a week and it ended up taking me like four hours total to move over to Astro for the like my T three like personal site blog, all this. So it still links to Astro dot doesn't need to do that because T three dot GG is now the Astro site. 
as for supporting SSR is super cool. I want to do another like in-depth stream once it's a little more stable and the 1.0 is out. But yes, as for SSR is really cool. The reason I brought this up is because I was procrastinating on the hard thing at the time, which was our backend at ping was in shambles. At the time, it was still just me. We were It was called Round by T3 Tools. And I was... I was putting off our backend and TRPC was part of that backend exploration and exploring Astro was me putting that off. I ended up finishing it way faster than expected. I, I thought it was going to take me weeks for, I started at like seven or 8 PM that night. I probably even check the Git commits and see finished by like 10 or 11 still had a bunch of energy in the tank. I sighed. I said, I'm putting off this backend shit too much. I had to just sit here and do it and explore this TRPC thing. Went back to the TRPC website for like the hundredth time. And I, I don't know how to describe this other than I stared at this GIF and my brain did not comprehend it for at least a week or more after I first was told about TRPC by Tanner. And I came here. I just stared here. It was like, what, what the fuck is this? I, I, I see two things and it seems like when you change one, the other changes. And I, I don't know if my brain just wasn't seeing the server or client or if I was confused due to the way that the URL is defined right here or what. But I didn't comprehend for a bit the magic here. But when I start reading through the docs more, I think I was reading an example. I don't remember specifically when it clicked, but I saw it and I was like, oh, I write a validator and I have that here. And then when I dug into the React side specifically and I saw magic, where we have a type save result where hello has dot data, just like any use query does, but the result is type safe. And I wish it showed like with a screenshot if you hover over that this is correct, because that's like the real magic is we write a function in our backend and we can call it with type safety in our front. It's it's a bit to set up, it's a lot to comprehend, but then you realize that it's just functions that TRPC lets you convert your entire backend and frontend relationship into a chain of functions that are incredibly simply defined with a single like validator input that's optional that you can then serve however you want and consume pretty much however you want. There's good built-in ways to serve and consume. Like you can serve through the TRPC Next package and consume through TRPC React. But you don't have to. And I really love how TRPC lets me own my functions and not have to build a lot over them to have a good interface between my back end and my front end. Yes, there is, how do I put it? There is some amount of boilerplate here. Like there's a lot of pieces, even like in this React example, or that's the router example. In the React example, all of the things you have to add, you have to add to your PC server in Zod. You have to enable strict mode. If you don't do this, it will bomb, which is really annoying due to how like it's using TypeScript. But yeah, you need strict, you need strict and strict null checks on too. Uh, you then have to implement your app router, which it says like go here to figure out how that works. You install all the client side dependencies here. <laughs> you create your own export of those dependencies yourself because you can't use TRPC directly by importing TRPC. You have to import the custom defined TRPC type here that you make yourself. And then in your app, you have to wrap the, you have to define a client and then wrap your app in the provider. And this provider has to be directly above the query client provider. <laughs> Custom annoying problems if you don't wrap these two next to each other. This is the React query provider. And this is the TRPC provider that goes over it. And then you can use TRPC. That's a lot of boilerplate in your app and in your like service code. However, and this is where I really like the trade-off you are making that boilerplate investment in your system in the way you build, not in each API call itself. So because I have made this investment, my backend can now be beautifully simple. Any additional query or mutation we want to make is this simple now. I give it an, oh, this is a custom input validator here. Is there a Zod example in here? Here is a query, get token takes in z.object, which is a room slug 
So this is the input. You query this with a room slug that's a string. If it's not a string, this will fail. Your function won't even get called. It just throws an error that the client gets here. You can write a custom validator or anything else you want here, but you give it an input and you give it a function. This function has input, which is type safe based on what you put here. And has context, which is things that you provide via middleware earlier, like auth and shit. And from here, I fail if we don't have a session. I return null if we don't have a session. I should probably fail here. I, this is old ass code, so I've probably cleaned this up since. Otherwise, I return this TypeScript function call. Whatever this returns, that's now the typed contract of what the client gets. This is all of the code I had to write for this endpoint, and I would have written most of this anyways in any other solution. I would have had to write a like request function that takes in a request and a response. I validate the body of that request, make sure it has all the things that we expect on it, fail if it doesn't. I use Zod for that anyways. And then I resolve that thing with a function that is just any other traditional function. But if I was to port this to express, what I would basically be doing is writing all the usual express stuff for this function ahead of time, like processing the body, JSON converting it, all that. Then I take that result, I throw it through the same Zod validator I wrote here. And then if it fails, I catch that and do something specific for it. And then I copy the body from here and I put that underneath. And that is my, my traditional express API. It is the same thing with four times as much code. Every function is eating the boilerplate cost at that point. And then on top of that, now when you consume it, you have to eat more boilerplate because you have to define the type that that works with. You have to give a, you have to do fetch slash API slash get token dot JSON as the shape of what you expect here. And then if you change it in one place and you forget in the other, your type system is now broken and is lying to you. There is no room here for your type system to lie anymore because it is inferred from the back to the front. There is no binding. There's no aliasing. There's no type defining. There is just type consuming from one end to the other. And that magic is why the TRPC boilerplate is worth it because you're putting a little bit of boilerplate in your app to never again have to write boilerplate for your APIs. A little history lesson on TRPC itself. Uh, TRPC started because Colin, the creator of Zod, saw this repo, Obvious RPC. Obvious RPC is a, te er, a technique for strongly typed client-server communications that's so obvious you'll wonder why it hasn't always been like this. Uh, this was a, a simple project meant to demonstrate the idea that using TypeScript, you can write an API and then consume that on your client and have TypeScript compile that out for you and give you a type safe result. This is a very simple concept and even more simple in its implementation. I don't think anyone should use this and I really don't think anyone did. The repo has uh, 12 stars. I'll peek that there just above me so I don't have to hide myself. This basically didn't happen, <laughs> but Colin saw this got really excited, figured, yo, if I add Zod in here, it'll be easier to validate the inputs and outputs. There's a real opportunity here. And that's how TRPC started. And then Alex was like, oh, this is a really good idea. Where can this go? And kind of took over in a sense, like really pushed TRPC to where it's at now. I think that's a fun TRPC rant. We don't talk enough about why I like it so much. I just say how much I like it. So I hope this, this helps give context about why I picked TRPC, why, or how I learned about TRPC, why I picked it, and why I'm still so happy with it. To answer the question that kicked off this rant of, if I didn't have TRPC, what would I use? I probably would have seen Blitz, gotten really upset, and started ripping things from it to replicate it myself. And without being able to do that, I probably would have found Zod and built something a lot like TRPC.